Bonjour. Bonjour. Welcome to the Art Lady channel. And today we're here learning about Monsieur Claude Monet. Ah, here's a self-portrait by Claude Monet right here. That's what he looked like when he was younger. And of course, he lived to be a very old man. He was born in 1840 in Paris, France. You know, Paris is one of my favorite places. And he died in 1926. That's almost 100 years ago. But he lived well over 100 years ago, didn't he? Well, Claude Monet was a French Impressionist painter. And Impressionism is painting how, how we see things. And Claude Monet, with a group of his friends, went outside and they painted what they saw. Some of the first artists to go outside and actually paint. One of his paintings that he put into an exhibition, meaning put into a museum, was called Impression Sunrise. And at first, people did not like his paintings of the sun and of the light and how the light reflected on the waters and how the light reflected into the trees. You see how, do you see the sun reflecting? And somebody made fun of his art one day. Bad impression, they're just impressions. And it stuck. So now the group is called Impressionism. And actually some of them liked it. One of his most famous paintings is of the beautiful Japanese bridge. And that's one of my favorites too. I love the bridge. He painted this bridge many times. And of the water and the water lilies. And that's what we're gonna be painting today. We're gonna be doing an impressionistic bridge. Now, let me tell you a little story about the bridge. How did he get an idea of the bridge? How did he get an idea of a Japanese bridge? Well, let me show you his house. This is a model of his house and inside his home. And hanging on the walls, here I'll show you like this. And hanging on the walls, he liked to collect Japanese art, Japanese prints. And throughout, throughout his house, if you go there today, you will see, here's the kitchen you will see many Japanese prints hanging on the walls. Some of them are quite famous. One is by the artist named Hokusai, yeah. The Great Wave. I love that painting. Here's some more of his prints. So, when he saw Japanese art and the lovely impressions of how they painted and the images, it inspired him and inspired him to make this beautiful, tranquil water garden in his backyard. And so he made this bridge and he painted the bridge over and over many times. And we're gonna be doing that today. Here's another one of his bridges here. This is just partial part of the painting. And what's so exciting is you can go today and walk over this bridge today. So let's begin by doing our version right here. Here's our version of Monet's Japanese bridge with little water lilies underneath. And today with me, I have some first grade students that'll help me out and we're gonna draw together. Now, if I ring my bell, that means I'm up doing something that you need to pay attention to and you wanna make sure that you follow step by step with me. So the bell means pay attention and watch as we draw. So now I'm gonna begin and we're gonna start off with the actual bridge in the center of our page. I'm gonna go about four fingers from the edge of my page and I'm just gonna put a little mark. This is an artist's guideline. And I'm gonna turn this mark into a number one. Let's make that number one three fingers. Three fingers long. So measure to make sure it's three of your fingers. And we're gonna to go to the other side of our page and we're gonna mark four fingers 
See the width of my four fingers? That's my guide. Put a little one. Now I want to make sure if I go across my page, this one is going to be lined up to this one. And I'm going to make this, here it comes. I'm going right across horizontally, coming down. And I'm going to measure three fingers up and make sure that it's about the same length. Now, if you, <clears throat> if you look at mine, this is not exactly the same as this. So you're going to assess your artwork. And then if yours isn't the same length, just adjust it, make it a little bit longer. So measure with your finger, top of the finger. Where does it go? I'll mark it on my finger so you can see. Top of my finger, it goes to here. Then go on the other side and measure. Using your body's parts is easy to measure with. There. So mine is approximately the same length. You don't necessarily have to have it the same length. So these are going to be the outside bridge posts. Let's make the post. Just go over straight, over straight, and then down. Make it pretty skinny. These are just the posts. Over and down, over and down. So that's our guideline for our bridge. And again, this is a very simplified version of Monet's bridge. Simplified for kids who are eight years old and seven years old, right? Six years old, some kids are six. Six and seven, most of us are six and seven and a couple of us are eight. Now. Picture, I want everybody to picture, let's listen carefully, a rainbow arch. That's a curve, right? Pretty big curve. Now watch. If I curve up, I want this to be even, so I'm going to plan this. So if I go across the page to find the middle, and I'm going to jump up from my middle and put a little guideline. Look at that. I just went up about two fingers. I took this, drew across an imaginary line, and I take two fingers and jump up. Let's see. I'm going to go slow so you can get these steps. Then I'm going to just now bring this down and curve it gently and connect. And I'm going to do the same on the other side, curve and connect. I just want to make sure I get this arch. So we go slow and careful, just so the bridge is even. Now let's do this. Take your fingers and measure three, three down, because if this post is three down, then the center is gonna be three down. So put your fingers underneath the center, measure three down. Put a little guideline. If it's not exactly the center, just make it the center. So I'm down three now. And I'm going to take this post and I'm going to curve it up to the center line. And if you predict what's going to happen to this other post, this, yeah, same thing. Come over and down. Same thing. So it should look, do you have some straight posts here? You don't want crooked posts. It's Getting them straight is the hardest part of kids' art. Sometimes they're way crooked, but for perspective, you want it to be straight. Now, look at my fingers. Let's visualize, and actually, let's just put two posts in. You see where my fingers are? If we measure equal distance, practice where you're gonna put your posts. Here's two. If you put it over here, is that too close? Is that equal? No. So practice first lining it up to make it look good for your fingers. And if you like where they look, then that's where you're going to make your posts. Now watch how I'm going to do my posts. I know this post is going to be here. So watch what I'm going to do. And I'm going to go down. Now this is careful, so pay attention to this. I'm going down absolutely straight. You want it to be parallel with the edge of your page and with this post. Do you know what parallel means? Okay, parallel, let me show you. I go down straight. Parallel means it's the same distance from here to here as the top of the post to here. So if I measure with this brush, same, same. And you can eyeball it. 
So this is absolutely straight. So if yours is a tad crooked, and actually mine's a tad crooked, that's no big deal. Just make it a little straight, fix it. We can fix it like this because we're gonna paint this in anyways. Now go back to where your, your fingers were and make sure that you know where you want your post and then do straight. And this is gonna be parallel with this. So equal distance from here to here. It's equal distance from the edges of this page. I'm gonna show you what it would look like if it was crooked. So watch for a second. If I did those two posts crooked, watch what would it look like. So pretend I didn't make this post yet. A crooked post, here's my arch. Don't draw the crooked. It, it's something like this. You see the difference in what it would look like? Yeah. That's crooked. That is not parallel to this straight post. So this is now straight. Okay. So basically there's our bridge. Now we can make this line thicker because this is a railing that goes across. And if you ever get a chance to go to Giverny, it's just amazing. So look, connect, connect slowly, connect slowly, connect slowly. And now this, we're gonna make the, the, the banks of the pond. What's a bank? Is it where you put your money? No. Yeah, but not a bank of pond. The bank of the pond is here. So let's take our, our pen and we're just gonna go over and make this the land. So this will be the land and then this is the water. And then we take end of the post here and bring this to this edge. And this is actually almost the perspective that I did when I was actually in Monet's garden. I sat there for three hours one day and drew this bridge. And so I was sitting on a bench over here on this side. And there's lots of trees in the background here and trees over here. And so let's stick a tree in. That'll just help frame it. And actually there's a canopy that goes over this bridge that has wisteria vines growing, but we may skip that. So let's put a tree in. Well, if you want to, I'll show you how to do that. But let's put a tree in right here. Up, and then we're gonna straight line, another straight line, bring it down a little bit so it's near the bank. And then branch out. And we'll branch like a Y on this side to the corner of our page. Make sure you go up to the top and on the corner. And this kind of composition stuff, you can change up. It doesn't have to be exactly like mine. Go back down and over. I'm just gonna give you a basic tree shape. And then you can add some sticks for branches in. Right now we're just sketching out composition. That's where you put things. In this painting that I did, I kind of made up. His house is, is basically across the street, way over here but I wanted some of that little bit of house, so I stuck it in there. That's what artists do, the beauty of being an artist. You can change things up in a composition to, to make it pleasing to how you're gonna draw this. Now, let's stick another tree in over here just to make our composition more interesting. Two lines for a tree, make it thicker at the bottom, and do some branching. Branch to the, to the left, branch to the right like the letter Y I stuck up right in and add some skinny branches now the arch at the top is actually um, wisteria vines and when I went it was very overgrown a lot the, the wisteria vines were very 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 old now I want you now that we have the composition okay I'm gonna demonstrate how to use these water solubles. Now, you can take this composition and use tempera paint and paint this in. You can take this composition and use water soluble crayons to paint this in with. You can use markers. Pastels are beautiful. Monet did some pastel work. It's like a chalk with a lot of pigment color in it. So it's up to you how you're gonna finish this, but I just wanna demonstrate real quick how you can do it with 
water solubles. The bridge is a green color. So if you use the water solubles, you can go ahead and just color in this area with green. Now remember, we're not doing anything now. We're waiting for the video because I'm gonna do it so fast. So don't color right now. So I'm using some water solubles. And if you use water solubles like I'm doing, if you use the ink pen, a blue, purple, or green ink pen, when you wet this, this color, the blue pen will bleed in and give a nice shadow on that bit, on that bridge. And Monet did, since he painted the light, he did little dashes. When you view this, the ripples in the water and the sunlight reflecting create these little dashes of color in the water. So it appears the water's always moving. And when he draws the little dashes of color, he's trying to almost create motion too, as the sunlight is flickering. And he painted, he painted how the sun flickered and the water moved. He was trying to capture all that movement and all that light as it changed. And when he watched the light, as he watched the light in the sky and the clouds would go in front of the light, the light would change and the water would move. And so it formed these little, it, it formed these little dashes of color. And so that's what he was trying to paint. If you wanna put a little sunlight in, just be very careful of um, the blues when you're blending color. And his water lilies, were just little dashes of color from a distance. You don't see a lot of detail in the water lilies because they're so small and they're done in groupings. And then this can be the plants on the edge, right in here, but little dashes of water, of color is all you need with a little bit of sunshine on it for the impression of the water lily. See where they get the name Impressionism? It's only dashes of color. Look at that close up. It's only little dashes of color. Now, when we paint this in, let me demonstrate very fast and then you can be on your own. When you paint this in, these little dashes of color then become, as I melt them, these little dashes of color and I'm only wetting the water first. Now remember, you wanna have it all colored before you start wetting this, if you're gonna be doing water soluble. But the little dashes of color now become the water in his, and the dashes remain, but it, it blends and gives a nice light color. And then watch how you do the bridge. When it starts melting, you get the shadow with the blue, it blends in. And I want you, I want you to continue adding your own ideas to your Monet water lily painting. And I hope you enjoy Monet's water lily bridge. Au revoir.